We're talking Formula One on the new ProLine TV YouTube channel. Thanks for tuning in if you haven't been here before. Greg De Palma hosting the show along with CJ Verdun from rotowire.com. And we only have a couple more Formula One races to preview. And then the season's over. And then we're going to actually talk NASCAR. So that's going to be in about three weeks. We're going to go over our silly season, uh, postseason kind of show because we didn't have a real silly season on our own network. Uh, we were too busy picking races each week. So, uh, and then at some point we'll have an off season show on, on F1 when that will be, uh, we don't know, but that's why you need to subscribe here on ProLine TV. If you are an F1 or NASCAR fan or both, uh, because we're going to have a lot of coverage for you, uh, not only during the seasons, of course, but, uh, we'll be back in the off seasons. So, uh, we have two more to go, CJ. And even though Max Verstappen did not win, he just basically did what he had to do and just coasted. <laughs> And won the championship in uh, not so dramatic fashion. Yeah, not very dramatic fashion. It was not as an exciting race as I think Las Vegas produced the year before, unfortunately. Uh, the cold weather, um, as predicted, uh, made all the difference to whoever was able to get their tires operating in the optimal temper temperature range. And that happened to be Mercedes. Uh, second best was Ferrari. So George Russell ended up leading 49 out of 50 laps. Lewis Hamilton, his teammate, led the other one lap of that. And then, uh, yeah, Max Verstappen just needed to finish three point within three points of Lando Norris. He actually finished ahead of Lando Norris by one position, fifth versus sixth. And that wrapped up his fourth championship in a row and fourth of his career. And by the way, uh, Carlos Sainz and Charles Leclerc in the last couple of laps actually got by uh, Max Verstappen. Um, I think it was him playing a little bit. Number one, the Ferraris were, were faster. But number two, I think it was Verstappen just knowing where Norris was and knowing that he didn't need those positions. So he was happy to kind of let them go without too much of a fight. All right. Well, there you go. Uh, how did you do as far as the race? Because uh, the... You know, having Russell win, he was uh, he. What was he at odds wise? He was uh, was he he was above seven. If I'm oh not yeah, right. he was he was pretty far up there. He was not in the top three. I think everybody was still giving Max Verstappen based on the weather and the win that we saw in Brazil. I think they were giving him too much of the benefit of the doubt. Uh, and then of course it was Lando Norris and the Ferraris. Um, so Russell and and Hamilton, uh, whether you had them for podium finishes or uh, the win. Obviously, the win with Russell would have been the big payoff, but even still double podium for both of those um, Mercedes cars, kind of unpredictable. And by the way, um, their one two finish actually made this the most competitive season of Formula One in history. It's the first time I think we've had four teams win uh, lock out the first two steps, first and second, finish first and second in a race. It was the first time, um, I think seven drivers, if I'm not mistaken, have multiple victories. Wow. Uh, it's just uh, pretty crazy. The way that this season started with Max Verstappen and Red Bull's domination, like they had the past couple of years, you never would have predicted that the rest of this season would become so unpredictable. And like we've been talking about in recent weeks, unfortunately, if you didn't pick up Max Verstappen in the crazy odds that he had him for the championship with the competitive nature as it is, it's really hard each week to pick a winner that's actually going to make you some money. Yeah. Matter of fact, uh, take a look at this. This is the uh, odds. I was like F1 futures. I mean, it's all over. What's this for? What's for next year? Well, look at they already got next year's championship futures up and look at what we've got here. Look at that. <clears throat> How about that? Pretty much even odds across the top four, if not five. Uh, what do you think about that? Well, I think you're giving Lewis Hamilton too much of a benefit. Um, maybe he'll do well. I mean, he's switching teams. It's going to be the first time he's driving for Ferrari. Charles Leclerc is there, so we'll see how those two match up. Uh, Max Verstappen, Red Bull is, uh, they, they have figured out 
what was ailing them the middle part of the season and they've been able to change their car around they had some trouble at las vegas they ended up bringing the wrong rear wing so they actually had to take a saw to their <laughs> rear wing and and chop, uh, saw off the back in order to get enough uh straight line speed at las vegas but they did enough to win so uh, you know mclaren actually has lost a little bit of their advantage as well and we'll talk about that as we talk about qatar this week um so i, I yeah it, it's, it speaks to the competitive nature. I think if you would have looked at these odds this time last year after Max Verstappen wrapped it up, he probably would have been negative still at that point. Um, and okay. obviously you, you would have made money if you even if you took that last year. But I think the way that it is now uh, with this last year coming into 2025 of the current re re regulations, it's going to be the final evolution. All these teams have basically max or are maxing out what they can get out of this current rule set and that's i think why we're seeing it so competitive right now so i think until 2026 uh it's going to be a pretty close fought battle throughout so i think 2025 we can expect some more uh tight racing again which is good for formula one and good for the sport so you don't so even though you're getting three to one on max you're not saying at this point in time it's necessarily a good deal i you know, in comparison to past years, yeah, it's a good deal. And I do think, as I said, that Red Bull is starting. Yeah. They, they figured out their um, they figured out their ailments and they've been getting the car better. Uh, but it's still very close between Ferrari and McLaren and Red Bull if you put them all together. So uh, I think Max Verstappen, you, I've never seen odds like this on him for a championship. However, yeah. it's 12 months away. Uh, so I, I'm not I'm not so sure even even at that if I'm willing to take it even for Max Verstappen at this point. Yeah, it's uh, it's early, and like you, I see no reason to wager on any of this stuff at this point in time. So uh, the next season begins when? Next season will begin March, uh, either end of March or early April of 25. Okay, so yeah, I mean you got six months, so just uh, chill out. And wait until then. And when we have our pre preseason preview, uh, at that point, we'll uh, we'll have a better idea. And then, uh, yeah, I would recommend waiting till you, at least you see a couple of days of uh, the testing, the winter testing, just to see what strides, if any, the teams have made with their cars. It's always tough to to make a you know a full season prediction based on a couple of days of testing at the very beginning of the season um in in the winter time but i think that'll give you a, a better picture as to whether or not we still got a competitive field and i'm willing to bet with uh, those three teams as good as they are and as good as all the drivers are that it's going to be about the same as we saw in 2024 this past season are any of these uh guys gonna be serious yeah contenders yeah, I think Oscar Piastri and George Russell would be two that you want to look at. Uh, George Russell, obviously, he won last week at Las Vegas. Mercedes is figuring out what they are lacking. Uh, obviously, within the cold weather, they got their tires working perfectly. They had the speed at Las Vegas, which is a very high-speed track as well. So that car is not lacking for power, and they know where their strengths are. So as long as they're able to exploit those and continue improving, I think they can be right up there with McLaren, Ferrari, and Red Bull next year. All right. And all these other guys, I mean, you're just throwing your money away. So Pretty much, yeah. Uh, now, let's talk about this week's race. Uh, and, uh, again, we have two more to go. Uh, let's see what we got. So we still have some opportunities to make a little F1 money. And uh, yet, again, yet again, George Russell, just because he won last week. <laughs> <laughs> on a completely different track, under completely different conditions, they're going to make him the the co favorite. I, I would not. Good for us. Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly right. Do not take that. Anybody that's listening to us, don't take that. <laughs> All right. So Max is in good shape. Lando, uh, not too far behind, and you got Lewis Hamilton and Leclerc. Even Piastri's up there. So uh, what are we looking at this week with these contenders? Uh, interesting. So this is a completely different track than we had at Las Vegas and it's completely different weather as well. So Las Vegas, the temperatures in that desert at night were in the forties, fifties. So, so pretty cold for formula one racing. And by the way, that the majority of that track is long straights and it had very slow corners. So it is very difficult to get your tires up to temperature. If you got them up to temperature in the, the corner, you just, they just cool off over the long straight. Mercedes was the best at getting those up to speed. 
guitar, very different. It's going to be about you know high 60s, 70s in that desert. And by the way, it's got medium to high speed corners. So there's a, it, it demands a, a higher operating temperature for the tires. And because of that, actually, Pirelli and because of the curbs at this track, Pirelli is actually bringing their hardest compound tires this week, whereas last week at Las Vegas, they brought some of their softest. Um, so does that mean that Mercedes uh, continues their strength from from Las Vegas? Absolutely not. Completely different track, completely different weather conditions. So I think, again, you're looking at McLaren and you're probably looking at Ferrari. Um, Max Verstappen could spring a surprise. So the question really is for Verstappen, is, is Red Bull truly on top of what ailed them in the middle of part of the season? Have they truly fixed that or are they still kind of on the back foot? I think we saw at Las Vegas that they are still kind of on the back foot. So I think that comes down then to McLaren versus Ferrari. And I think these are two extremely well matched teams, especially for this weekend. So the McLaren on paper, I would think is the better car at Qatar over an entire race distance because of the high to medium to high speed corners. That just suits McLaren so much better. I think Ferrari has the one lap speed, but they haven't on these courses been able to make those tires last through an entire pit cycle or the race distance. So I think that gives McLaren the edge. However, it's going to be very close between these two teams. I think your top choices should be Lando Norris. And maybe if you want to go with somebody a little bit more risky, I think Charles Leclerc is your guy. I'd be interested to see what the podium odds are, if not a double podium, because I think um, very well could see a Lando Norris winning the race with a Leclerc and a Carlos Sainz second and third on the podium. Yeah, where is Sainz? I don't see him here. I think he was further up there. Oh, wow. Look at that. Why is he all the way down there? No way. No idea. That is interesting. So there was a little bit of a controversy at Las Vegas between the teammates. As I talked about before, 425, Lewis Hamilton is leaving Mercedes and going to Ferrari. And that means that science is out. Um, Ferrari did call in team orders at Las Vegas to keep Leclerc ahead of Signs, but Signs went through and passed him. So I wonder, <laughs> I wonder if we might be seeing some of that uh, backlash here in the odds, thinking that maybe Ferrari, with just two races left, uh, employing Signs may not be giving him the full weight of the team. However. I think, again, with the track, I think it's very much a McLaren and Ferrari type of track, and I'd give the nod to McLaren and specifically Lando Norris because they've been able to make their tires work over an entire race distance. I okay. Do think, I do think Ferrari is going to be there for the pole, and I think Ferrari is going to be very fast as they've caught up to, to McLaren, um, but I do think over the full race distance that McLaren and Norris had the edge. All right, so you would do Norris and Piastri then? I would. Yep. Okay. So <clears throat> Norris at four to one, Piastri at seven to one. And hey, why not just throw a buck on, on science, right? Absolutely right. Absolutely. I mean, still one of the best cars on the grid. It works very well, or is going to work, I would suspect, very well at Qatar. If anything happens to either Leclerc or Norris, um, I think science is going to be right there in the mix as well. And like I said, if if you want to take a look at the spots for a podium finish, I think Leclerc and Sainz are both great options for that. And in fact, I think both of them for a double podium is entirely within the realm of possibility. Yeah, I mean, that is uh, interesting that and there was there's no nothing out there as far as news on them, right? On, on Carlos Sainz, like there's no, something uh, going on. No, um, no, he should be. He should be right up there, I would suspect. So yeah, anything, anything other than the fact that he's with the team for his last two races, and there was a bit of controversy last week at Las Vegas passing his teammate, my guess is that um, just because of that, Ferrari wanting to keep Leclerc ahead. Keep in mind, the Constructors' Championship is still in play. So Ferrari okay. is still within striking distance of catching McLaren. In fact, after that, they're... Uh, 16, 24 points behind uh, for Qatar for the Constructors' Championship. So uh, two races left to go, plus a sprint race this weekend. Um, you know, Ferrari's got everything still to play for, so it's in their best interest to have both of their drivers, whether they're employing them next season or not, to finish as high as possible. I wonder why they don't have... Interesting. 
We usually do this earlier in the week. Maybe they took some of these off. Yeah, I bet you they took them off because of practice. Uh, ah, okay. Being today, yeah. So yeah. they'll wait to see how practice sessions come out. Okay. Qualifying for the sprint race tomorrow, uh, they'll have that this afternoon, and then after tomorrow's sprint race, they'll have qualifying for Sunday's race. So, my guess is uh, everything is off as a result of uh, waiting to see how practice and qualifying shake out. All right, so there you go. So uh, you're going to go Norris, Piastri, and why not throw a buck on signs? Because who knows? You got it. And uh, yeah, because I was looking here, and all I got is uh, let's see, Leclerc on alleged row with signs in Vegas, <laughs> uh, in quotes, frustrated me tremendously. And uh, what else? Uh, F1 mailbag. Why wasn't Carlos Signs penalized at the Las Vegas Grand Prix? So anyway. Um, there you go, F1, Qatar, and it all wraps up next week with Abu Dhabi. Very cool track. Um, another desert, warmer desert, uh, some medium and high speed corners there as well. So I think this week will be a pretty good uh, preview of what to expect coming up at Abu Dhabi. However, uh, it's going to be interesting to see how much closer that championship fight is for the constructors title between McLaren and Ferrari before we get to that last race of the year. So they've had a lot of racing at Abu Dhabi, but only what, two at Qatar? Only two. So Qatar was actually built for the motorcycles, MotoGP, and just uh, in 2021, Formula One visited for the first time. So that course was designed for motorcycles, which is all about momentum. Uh, so that's why you've got the um, uh, medium to high speed corners. It's a very flowing track. The front straight is about a kilometer long, if I'm not mistaken. So it's a very long front straight. It only has one DRS zone. Um, so it's uh, going to be difficult to pass both races at Qatar that have been there for Formula One. The winner has won from pole leading every single lap, and that was Lewis Hamilton as well as Max Verstappen. I think we might be in for a better race than that this year. However, it is just saying very difficult to pass there. So, and Max has won four straight. So... <laughs> Four straight titles, exactly. Yeah, right. I mean, four, yeah, four straight at uh, Abu Dhabi. At Abu Dhabi is all, yep. Yeah. Yep. So, like this week's race, next week uh, might be good to go back to Max. Yeah, I think Max will have a better shot next week. Um, I think there are more places to pass. I think the McLaren and the Ferrari have got him and Red Bull in qualifying, which means they're going to likely have the higher starting spots, which means strategy and passes on track for Verstappen. And I think Abu Dhabi is a much better place for him to be able to do that. All right, so that's going to wrap it up. We'll have a link in the description of this uh, video, I believe. Uh, right? We're going to have the you have your fantasy uh, report for this week. I have it out there. I'll make sure that the link gets over and posted to the video, so you can check me out at rotowire.com. Excellent, and we'll see you again next week. Uh, and uh, we've got one more to go, and then, like you said, in a couple of weeks, if you're NASCAR fans, uh, we'll be back to talk a little bit about the off season and what to look forward to for 2025. So, for CJ, we're doing. I'm Greg DePama. We'll see you guys next week.